Once again, the FAA has forced SpaceX to halt all activities to investigate the latest issue with Falcon 9. But the question is, is this really worth an FAA investigation causing multiple missions to get delayed? Could there possibly be a political motive behind it? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The FAA works too slowly. After the latest Falcon 9 incident, it wasn't until September 30th that the FAA officially requested the company to investigate the cause of the second stage rocket malfunction. The belatedness came after SpaceX had already addressed the issue on its own, proactively postponing its later launches since Sunday. The agency stated, the FAA is aware an anomaly occurred during the SpaceX NASA Crew 9 that launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida on September 28th. The incident involved the Falcon 9 second stage landing outside the designated hazard area. No injuries or property damage has been reported. The FAA is requiring an investigation. Even though SpaceX launched from NASA's complex in Florida, the FAA still licenses Falcon 9 flights. And this is exhausting, but it's already part of the government's rather tedious regulations. Just look how the FAA announced the FAA is aware an anomaly occurred, like some omnipotent body of gods interrupting someone to tell them something that they already know. But the reality is, they didn't know any more than we did at the time they made this announcement. Second stage of Falcon 9 experienced a minor issue during re-entry, and instead of hitting the target area, something caused it to veer off course and land outside the Pacific Ocean. Of course, the actual damage to anything was practically zero. This was not a serious incident for SpaceX, but it happened during a rather tense period between SpaceX, Elon, and the FAA regarding fines last year. It's hard not to speculate that this investigation might take longer than previous ones if the FAA is politically motivated. Let's take a small survey. If you think SpaceX will fly again soon, comment yes. Otherwise, comment no. Either way, we should think positively that once everything gets resolved, the FAA definitely won't be able to hold SpaceX back for long. Before the flight, NASA's commercial crew program manager, Steve Stitch, shared that his agency's work with SpaceX on recent anomalies and the company's rocket, one of them involving the second stage of Falcon 9 having a faulty engine, while the other saw Falcon 9 first stage land hard on SpaceX's drone ship and then topple over. SpaceX responded quickly after the previous second stage anomaly, allowing the rocket to fly after ensuring that systems involved in the issue were not used in subsequent flights. It's unclear whether the same systems are involved in the latest Falcon 9 second stage anomaly, as SpaceX hasn't disclosed any further details about the upper stage's newest malfunction. Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist and expert in space flight, wrote on X that the most likely failure mode still led to re-entry which was a mild burn of the Merlin vacuum. This could have caused the rocket to go off course and re-enter somewhere in the Pacific Ocean farther northeast than the expected recovery area. We hope that the rocket won't face too long of a delay, as SpaceX is still aiming for a record year of 148 launches. Including the recent Crew-9 launch, SpaceX has now done a total of 96 launches, consisting of 93 Falcon 9s, one Falcon Heavy, and two Starship launches. To hit 148 launches by the end of the year, SpaceX would need to hit a launch cadence of 2.47 days or fewer. After the suspension, the workhorse Falcon 9 is going to be very busy. History shows that SpaceX resumes Falcon 9 launches quickly, but significant interplanetary science missions remain hanging in the balance. Falcon 9 is scheduled to launch October 7th with the European Space Agency's Hera spacecraft to visit binary asteroids and study the system following NASA's DART spacecraft impact in 2022. DART tested an asteroid deflection technique that could move an object off a collision course with Earth. Three days later, on October 10th, SpaceX is scheduled to launch NASA's $5 billion Europa Clipper mission on a Falcon Heavy to start a six-year journey to Jupiter, where it'll explore one of the giant planet's icy moons. Falcon Heavy essentially uses the same upper stage design as Falcon 9. Both of these missions require two burns of Falcon 9's upper stage Merlin vacuum to send the Hera and Europa Clipper spacecraft beyond the solar system. They also have limited launch windows to leave Earth and get to their destinations. Hera's launch window runs from October 7th to the 27th, and Europa Clipper is October 10th to November 6th. These are crucial and expensive missions, with some payloads delayed for far too long and they desperately needed to fly, even requiring a specific launch window. For this reason, we hope that SpaceX's Falcon rockets can quickly identify the issue to get back in the air, racing towards new records for the year. While managing Falcon launches in Florida, SpaceX and Elon haven't forgotten to defend themselves and mock the absurdity of bureaucratic red tape. This time, not the FAA, but the FCC with an unacceptable announcement about Starlink. 
Although it's not directly tied to the company's rocket launches, Starlink is currently the primary payload and a major source of revenue, playing a big role in driving the development of SpaceX's rocket programs. Elon reposted the story on X accompanied by the comment, Contemptible Political Lawfare. It's a blunt statement, but perfectly fitting given the disrespectful behavior government agencies are displaying towards SpaceX. Last year, in a written statement, the FCC upheld its 2022 decision to deny SpaceX Starlink an $885 million subsidy intended to provide broadband service to 642,000 rural Americans. FCC Chair Jessica Rosenworcel doubted Starlink's ability to deliver the promised service. Today, Starlink is connecting more than 7,700 new customers a day. FEMA is deploying Starlink to aid victims in North Carolina after the hurricane, and major airlines across the world are signing deals to outfit their entire fleets with Starlink. It's proven to be a fast, reliable service for millions. The FCC has program requirements that Starlink is not obligated to meet until next year. However, Chair Rosenworcel prematurely predicted Starlink wouldn't meet these requirements, despite the deadline being years away. By December 31st next year, Starlink is expected to demonstrate its ability to provide high-speed internet to at least 40% of the 642,000 rural locations, and it's already shown it can do that. So, why revoke the $800 million subsidy? It makes no sense. Chair Rosenworcel claims Starlink is unreliable, but if that were true, why are other U.S. government agencies signing major contracts with SpaceX for Starlink? The FCC needs to reverse this. If the government tries to connect those 642,000 Americans with fiber, it'd cost 10 times more and take years. SpaceX is ramping up production of Starlink so fast that it'll soon be the largest producer of printed circuit boards in America. The biggest losers of this are the 642,000 people who could have high-speed internet much faster. After all, if the FCC maintains this decision, it's not just going to affect SpaceX, but harm hundreds of thousands of Americans waiting on high-speed internet. While Starlink has proven its ability to deliver fast and reliable service, denying this subsidy could slow the network's expansion into remote areas. This not only hinders economic and education development in rural regions, but also widens the digital divide between urban and rural areas. Moreover, this decision could be seen as a setback in efforts to promote technological innovation and competition in the telecom sector. SpaceX, with its advanced satellites, is providing a viable solution to address connectivity issues in hard-to-reach areas. Failing to support these efforts could discourage other tech companies from investing in similar challenges. Ultimately, the dispute highlights the need for a more flexible approach to managing public resources. Regulatory agencies like the FCC need to carefully balance adhering to regulations with fostering innovation, especially when dealing with technologies that have the potential to bring significant societal benefits. Achieving this balance ensures that public policies don't inadvertently hinder progress, but instead facilitate sustainable and equitable growth in the digital age. In the latest meeting last week, President Gwynne Shotwell informed Texas lawmakers, this week, by the way, we'll pass 4 million customers for Starlink, which is quite exciting. The milestone means SpaceX has gained a million new customers since the end of May. This outpaces the company's already impressive growth rate. Starlink started providing beta service of its product in October 2020, hitting a million subscribers by December 22, 2 million by September 23, and 3 million this May. The constellation now comprises nearly 6,000 satellites, with service available in 100 countries to individual users as well as large enterprise customers like airlines and cruise ships. The service is on track to generate $6 billion in revenue this year, an increase from roughly $1.5 billion just two years ago, according to research and consulting firm Quality Space. Starlink is central to SpaceX's plan to commercialize and eventually explore space. While the companies continue to raise money from investors, CEO Elon has said for years that revenue from the broadband internet service could help fund further development for the massive reusable rocket Starship. In turn, bringing Starship online helps the company launch even more Starlink satellites at a greater cadence. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.